Don't use certs to acquire knowledge. Use them to validate your knowledge and experience. In the enterprise world, certifications demonstrate a shared understanding of a platform, a shared terminology, and a certain level of cloud expertise that can speed up time to market for all kinds of projects. But when should you get certified? And let me share with you my personal take on this. I have all AWS associates and professional certs, and I often get asked whether I would be pursuing GCP or Azure certifications. And my answer has always been the same. I will when a professional need arises. Meaning, if one of my customers is keen on using a certain technology that's only offered by Microsoft Azure, then that's a good enough reason for me to study for that cert that addresses that specific problem. If one of my customers needs help in a domain I'm not familiar with, but is covered with a specialty certification, then that's a good enough reason for me to study for that cert. But I will not pursue a cert for academic purposes. I will not pursue a certification just to have it. Here's a personal anecdote. Early 2021, my understanding of Kubernetes was limited. I understood how it worked as an orchestration system and I could talk about its main components and how they interacted with each other, but that was it. But then two of my clients shared with me their desire to migrate their workloads to EKS. And that was it. That was all I needed in order to start my deep dive journey into the Kubernetes slash EKS world. And in result, became a certified Kubernetes administrator by the Linux Foundation a few minutes later. A few months later. I didn't do it because I wanted to add yet another cert to my portfolio although it feels good. Um, I did it because I had a professional need and I had to step up to the challenge. Side note, I got asked whether I got reprimanded because I went for a Google certification, although I work for AWS. Absolutely not. If you watched my video about the hiring process, you'd know how we love to hire people who bring a unique set of expertise to the team. The whole team was actually delighted we now have this knowledge in-house within the team and they could focus on learning other skills that could fill other gaps. All right, back to the subject. Now, there is no doubt preparing for a certification can help you strengthen your knowledge by clarifying key concepts. And some people study for a certification as a way to expand their knowledge or hoping to land a job. And that's a good enough reason as well. That's actually a professional challenge. Your certification will most certainly help you stand out among the competition. The thing is, you don't want your certifications to be the only thing you can offer, do you? So let me say this, don't use certs to acquire knowledge, use them to validate your knowledge and experience. So with that in mind, what is the best way to get AWS certified? Well, here's what I believe the best plan to go about this. The three steps plan to be AWS certified or certified for any other technology for that matter, and also become the subject matter experts in that field. The first step in your journey should be to join a company that already uses the technology you're pursuing. So if you want to be AWS certified, join a company that's already on AWS. This is the most important move you can make to get closer to your goal, in my opinion, of course, because you will have first-hand experience building and deploying production workloads, debugging and solving problems, and all of this within the AWS ecosystem. Besides, you'll have support all around you to get your questions answered by people who will most probably have more knowledge and experience. If you don't want to leave your current job, but your employer is not on the cloud, please make it a challenge of you to convince them to migrate to the cloud, any cloud for that matter. The benefits are just humongous. Step two, now that you're in an environment that pushes you forward, I want you to focus on expanding your knowledge not on acquiring the certification itself. The certification will come as a byproduct, right? So for the first six months to one year, I want you to continue to experiment with services, with technologies, with frameworks, with patterns. And I'll put some links in the description for helpful videos along these lines. Because regardless of the certification you choose, all AWS exam questions are based on real life situations and how you'd react to them. The more workloads you have helped building and deploying, the easier answering the exam questions will be. It's as simple as that. 
And finally, now that you have been immersed in a cloud environment and you have first-hand experience, it is time to prepare the certification you feel will validate your experience the most. And we will touch on which certifications are best for which roles in a second. But keep in mind that some companies offer training packages to their employees to help them get certified. So be sure to ask about this in your interview. If not, a lot of companies still offer access to LinkedIn Learning, um, Skillshare, Udemy, or many of these self-paced learning platforms. If your company does not offer it already, just ask for it. 99% of the cases, you will get access to one of these platforms. And I don't believe any company that cares about the well-being of its employees will cheap out on a few hundred dollars a year for such a good cause. So now you've completed these three steps, you're ready to pass the certification of choice. But which one do you go for? At the time of filming this, AWS offers 12 certifications. One foundational certification, three associate level certs, two professional level, and six specialty certifications. I know, it can get overwhelming, so let me help you navigate through them. The AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner is designed specifically for folks looking to gain an understanding of the concepts of cloud computing without the technical detail. So pursuing this certificate will provide you with knowledge about cloud computing from both a business perspective and a high level technical perspective as well. So you'll be able to describe AWS cloud value proposition. You'll be able to recognize and explain basic AWS cloud architecture principles. You'll be able to learn about the basic security and compliance aspects of the AWS platform, like for example, the uh, shared security model, among other things. It is useful for individuals in technical, managerial, sales, purchasing, or financial roles who work with the AWS Cloud. Now, if you are a developer looking to validate your building and deploying cloud workload skills, the AWS Developer Associate is an obvious one. Being Developer Associate certified typically means you're able to write code and design apps to run on AWS Cloud. It also means you're proficient in key services, in techniques and methodologies, including CI/CD, serverless, and the coupling of architecture to design, implement, and support optimized and resilient applications at scale. There are some requirements though. To take the AWS Developer Associate Certification Exam, you must have relevant hands-on experience and be familiar with messaging and queuing services. You should also have an understanding of stateless, loosely coupled distributed application, as well as relational and non-relational databases. Now, if your job is to be involved before the development phase starts by either collecting technical and business requirements, building POCs, testing the feasibility of an idea, you know, designing a solution for security growth and scale, and these are typically the responsibilities of a solutions, system or enterprise architect, then the AWS Solutions Architect Associate is the right certification to pursue. Its goal is to validate your knowledge across a number of different key areas, demonstrating you're able to effectively show knowledge of how to architect and deploy secure and robust applications using AWS. By the way, I talked about the role of a solutions architect in the interview video, so make sure to check that out. Now, the last certification on the associate level is the SysOps Administrator Associate. And this cert demands that you demonstrate the ability to to deploy solutions for different scenarios following best practices. It also asks you to be able to troubleshoot workloads in case of a problem and to exhibit the ability to tweak environment for performance. Again, try to go after their cert as a way to validate your knowledge in deploying, operating, scalable, highly available, and fault-tolerant systems. So which certs are best in AWS? And you know, this entirely depends on where you are and where you'd like to take your career. Say you enjoy working in networking and architectural space, then the following route would be a good fit. Start by AWS Cloud Practitioner, get to AWS Solutions Architect Associate, then the Architect Professional, and after that, you can get a specialty in networking. However, if you were a keen developer looking to move into application development and maybe work with Alexa in the future, then you might select a path that's similar to this. Start with the Cloud Practitioner, then get the Developer Associate, 
then developer professional, and after that, a specialty as an Alexa skill builder. Plan ahead and execute on your plan. It is far better, in my opinion, to have achieved these four certs in that order rather than going for 12 certs, all of them, one after the other, just for the sake of having them. To have followed one of these paths demonstrates, again, in my opinion, that you're someone who's clinical, who's who knows what they want, and, and who, who's able to strategize and then just go for it. All right, let me recap. The three certs I mentioned in this segment are all associate level, and they can benefit your career in many ways by helping you lead your organization to further success, but also by putting you in a stronger position when applying for AWS positions. The professional and specialty certs serve, in my opinion, an entirely other purpose, but that's a subject for the next video. In the end, guys, I want you to remember that certifications are a demonstration of your knowledge at a specific point in time. They don't last forever. They expire and need to be renewed after two years. But don't wait until they do. Build good habits to stay current and obsessed with learning. And I'll share with you links to resources I use personally to keep my skills up to date. So make sure to check the description for those. One last thing, guys. It is not easy to produce regular quality content while working a demanding job such as being an SA at AWS. But I'll keep doing my best to share with you, guys and girls, my experience, things I learned along the way to help you get to where you want to be. This being said, every like and every sub show me that you enjoy my content and give me that extra motivation to work the extra hours every week. So thank you in advance.